Yo, what is going on guys? It's Cbrev. Welcome to episode 8 of What Would Brev Do? This is the series where I, a top 50 player, play an entire game from start to finish and walk you through everything that's going on in my mind throughout that time. If you're new to the series or the channel, please drop a like and subscribe for more MLB The Show 20 content. Helps me out a lot, and if you've missed any of the first 7 episodes, links are in the description below. So we got a pretty exciting one today. Debuting three different prestige cards thanks to the Switch It Up 2 event, which is Switch Hitters and All-Stars. Uh, we finally finished off Prestige Helton. We finished off Prestige Bob Feller, which <laughs> Bob Feller has been absolutely terrible, so hopefully he does decent in this video. And then the big one, we finally got Prestige Mickey Mantle. This card is just absolutely cracked. Uh, we got Tremel in left field, and then the rest of the lineup is guys that I'm still working on prestiges for. So... Uh, we set the lineup like this. Let's hop into some gameplay. So we're at 946. We haven't played ranked since our last uh, episode. And I was playing it ship it in the event because we need those juicy stats. So let's go to Date Palm. That's where I usually play ranked. The odds that we get a home game anyway are <laughs> pretty low with all the dodging going on. Hopefully we get someone in... Legend above 900. I don't want to like Knock someone off that's going for World Series right now. We're kind of at that awkward rating where <laughs> it could happen um, What is there to talk about? Yeah, prestige Bob Feller gonna be on the bump today One thing I wanted to say before we got into the video I've been doing some self introspection in regards to this series and I've noticed that uh, sometimes I kind of gloss over things that I've talked about in previous episodes and I'm going to try not to do that anymore because there's no guarantee that everyone that watches this episode has seen the previous episode. So uh, I'm working on it, trying to make this series better. Uh, we're facing Roy Oswalt. Of course, we're on the road. Duh. He's got Addison Ray at catcher. That's kind of giggity. Um, overrated or underrated? I don't know. Probably not a topic for this video. And we're playing in the day at Shippy. Let's go. All right. So as always... We are hyper patient in the first inning. We want to see what our opponent's throwing. Uh, we want to see how they like the sequence, stuff like that. On top of that, we usually have speed towards the top of the lineup. So if he wants to give us a walk with some of our speed, we will gladly take that. Uh, with Oswalt, most people pitch normal. So that means fastballs and sinkers early in the count and then off speed with two strikes. Kind of like that. Um, so... Pretty standard. I don't think hitting against Roy is too hard for that reason. Not too many people pitch kind of backwards or weird with him. He's pretty standard, so that was a really good spot for that fastball. You can see my PCI was under it. It happens. It's a really awkward spot to hit, actually, below the belt but above the corner. Uh, I was really into throwing a fastball there in MLB 18 because that was pop-up city. So uh, Once again, he started us off with two fastballs. Uh, we're late on a fastball, so it's possible he's already assuming we can't hit it, so we'll keep that in mind. And he was, so we turn on it down the line. This may be a single. I'm going to test the arm. This is a really close play. I think we're out. Ooh. Okay. So that was immediate disrespect. So that tells us a lot about our opponent, that uh, I was late jammed on a fastball in the very first hitter of the game, and then he thinks that I can't hit it from then on. So RBI single for Sheffield. We are already rolling. Uh, also, to talk about that play, let me pause the game and talk about like sending runners from third. So, always think about when you're sending a runner from third to home, what you would do if you were fielding. So he's got his auto shift on, so his outfield's playing back. They are playing no doubles. I don't know why they do that. That's why I turn auto shift off. You can do that in the settings. Anyway, um, he had absolutely no shot at me at home. So that's why we kept the runner at first. If it was going to be a close play at home and we felt like our opponent really wanted to try and throw us out at home, then we would send the runner from first to second uh, because even if we're out, we still have a guy in scoring position. But that one was pretty obvious that uh, we were going to be safe, so no reason to run ourselves into an out. Um, but he is just pounding the zone. I wonder if, he's, if he knows. These days I never know if people know it's me or not. Um, so Mickey flies out about 350 feet. Mickey Mantle 0 for 1 in his debut. Still a beast of a card. And now he's keeping me off balance, so good on him. So we were looking to punish there if he kept going fastball, and he threw us a slider. So 
good job on him making the adjustment. 0-2, now we're just protecting. He went fastball inside, and we were a little under it again. So only scored one, but we swung it pretty well. I mean, that was the same exact swing as the Biggio one, but we had good timing instead of late timing. So we know that he's pitching pretty normally with Oswalt right now, and we'll see if Obfeller, prestige version, Still has a magnet towards the middle of the plate because regular Bob Feller was absolutely atrocious for me. <laughs> probably the worst prestige I've used pitcher-wise besides, well probably the worst prestige in general besides Duke Snyder. So Mickey and his diamond fielding is going to run that down. He was all over the changeup there um, and he took a fastball kind of down the middle to start the game. So let's give him another fastball and see if he adjusts here. That was actually on the corner from Bob, which is good news. Um, we want to throw the fastball for a strike, but we don't want it inside. Usually if you think people are going to adjust to your fastball, you want to throw it away. Just in case they turn on it, uh, they'll be a little early. So if you think someone might, like if you think someone's sitting off speed and then you think they might randomly turn on one, kind of like what I did with Didi in the first inning, uh, pitching away is much better than pitching inside in that situation. 2-2, two -two, let's see if he chases here. Great take by my opponent. His averages are all really high, so he's probably pretty good. And he did turn on the fastball, so we threw it right down the middle. Our opponent got good okayed twice, so what that tells me is we're going to have to score a lot this game. It's very obvious from the first two hitters that our opponent is very good. He knows what he's doing at the plate. He's all over both pitches that I've thrown so far. Uh, Bob Feller hitting 101 with no outlier. That's pretty sick. So we're going to just try to keep pounding the zone, staying ahead in the count. He's actually hitting pretty similar to my approach. I don't know if he's just sitting off speed early in the count or what the deal is, uh, but he's being super patient in the first inning as well, so good on him. Once again, see if he'll chase in the dirt here. We hung it, uh, but that was still kind of an awkward pitch to hit. So one, two, three, we call that a Houston Street inning. <laughs> uh, I'm from Colorado. A lot of my friends growing up, we would always meme a Houston Street inning or a Houston Street save would be like three flyouts to the warning track in a 1-2-3 inning. <laughs> if you guys don't know who Houston Street is, you should go watch some some lowlights of, of Street. Thank goodness the Rockies got cargo out of that holiday deal. That's all I'm going to say. Um, yeah, 0-1 count. I've talked about it before. I'm usually pretty aggressive in 0-1 counts because 0-2 counts are pretty much death sentences. So... He threw me a sinker pretty much down the middle. I just missed it, and I was just late. So once again, a mechanical error. Not a whole lot we can do about that one. Uh, like I said in the first inning, he's pounding the zone. He's giving me pitches for strikes early in the count, working ahead. So we're still taking these pitches for now. Great pitch. Um, but later in the game or whenever we get an opportunity to try to turn on these fastballs early in the count, we will definitely take that. Um, we have worked almost no pitches this inning and Tramel has speed as well as the pitchers on deck so this is a good spot to just take till two strikes I know some of you guys are cringing at me for that you always do but uh, not a lot of upside for swinging early in the count here in this situation aside from hitting a solo shot so just try to work some pitches this inning since our first two hitters did not do very well two outs and five pitches he may double up on this curveball here he went change up some sort of off-speed makes sense there since I swung and missed at the curveball before, and that's actually a big deal. Good job, Taylor Trammell. Now we get to turn the lineup over. Um, like I always say in all these episodes, there's really no reason to swing with your pitcher before two strikes, especially early in the game, unless there's like a runner in scoring position and you really feel like he's going to hose you one down the middle, where if you hit like a single, you could score a run. So that is not this situation, so we're just working the pitch count some more. And he threw a ball off the plate. It was kind of tailing back towards the plate, so I had to swing. But uh, pretty productive inning, even though we didn't score. We turned the lineup over. Biggio's going to start us off next inning. We got to see a little bit more of our opponent's pitch sequencing. All that good stuff. So Once again, I still can't tell what this guy's approach is. I don't know if he's being patient or if he's sitting off speed early in the count. One thing I do know is that he's not swinging at fastballs early in the count unless they are right down the middle. So that's why I'm throwing a lot of fastballs. That one was down the middle and he swung. 
Trying to get him swinging at this curveball again. Hopefully we don't hang it. I can't. I can hardly ever get this Jason Giambi out, dude. <laughs> this card owns me on this game. Pretty typical sequence. Go back up and in with the fastball, and he turned on it there. So I'm actually gonna hold for a second and go fastball up and in again. This is something I talked about before. Uh, when you hesitate between pitches, people think you're throwing a different pitch. So hesitating and uh, throwing the same pitch is usually good, but he was ready for that one. Joe Carter and his noodle couldn't get the out at first, so that pitch was off the plate, but he was still able to good-good it, so nice hit by my opponent there. Not a whole lot we can do, and now Bob Feller's doing Bob Feller things. So that's pretty bad. Takes away the double play for the heart of his order. Uh, you can see his speeding is bad up just a little bit now. So we're gonna, we have to throw a fastball here. And I wanted to throw it away. It ended up towards the middle, and he got good okayed again. So uh, we are Houston Bob Feller Street is what we're doing. <laughs> um, depending on the situation in the game, you could debatably put the infield in here to try to save this run from first. I am not going to do so. It's very obvious from both of our swings that this is going to be a mid to high scoring game. So. I would rather, honestly rather have the out than the run in this situation. So if he hits a ground ball to someone and we go to first, I'm happy with that. Pretty incredible takes by my opponent here, honestly. Like I said, I still can't tell if he's just being super patient, if he's sitting off speed, if he just has a really good eye. Oh, I thought they called that a ball for a second and I was going to be pissed. Okay, so here's a situation. We're going to do something probably dumb. Uh, let's look at his lineup. Mike Trout, D.D. Gregorius. So two straight batters that crush righties. He's been on the ball the whole game. So I'm actually going to double intentional walk to get to his pitcher and try to save this run. That kind of contradicts what I was just saying. Uh, but the odds that he actually takes Oswald out here is pretty low. If he did that, I would be pretty surprised. So this is obviously risky. Uh, but this gives us, a, gives us a better chance to get out of this inning without giving up a run. And in a high leverage situation where your opponent's pitcher is hitting, I usually like to put the outfield shallow. You can do that by pressing down on the D-pad to make some defensive adjustments. And I usually like to throw off speed to pitchers as well in these high leverage situations because usually good players are trying to turn on a fastball with their pitcher because it's the easiest pitch to square up with the small PCI. So. You can see his bat's fast. Uh, I'm going to throw a fastball 2-2 two -two because if I get to 3-2, it's very obvious I have to throw one. So I'm going to throw one now. He was late on it. Now we can double that up with some off-speed again. And we get him swinging. So <laughs> hard attack inning. I don't know how we haven't given up a run yet, but probably some high-level strategy is my guess. Hope you guys are enjoying this series, this episode. Like I always say, I love the constructive criticism. If you have anything, any suggestions for me to make this series better, please let me know in the comments. I just dropped over under a fastball down the middle. So, yeah, this guy's pounding the zone relentlessly. We just haven't found the right opportunity to try to turn on one. So, what can you do? Didi chops it. Another bad swing mechanically, but... I mean, it's DD versus a righty. That's probably a good time to swing early. I don't really want to do it a lot, though. He's kind of forcing my hand here. Went down and got that, but I was early on it. Oh, it was good, okay. Looks like an out. Yeah, unfortunate. Good pitch, though. Hard to do anything with that. Um, so now I'm looking to swing first pitch here because Prestige Mick with a guy on first. And we crushed it, so <laughs> that is textbook, <laughs> textbook Seabred right there. Um, we're very obviously aware that he wants to get ahead in the count. He's been kind of disrespectfully pounding the zone with fastball sinker early on. Uh, that was our shot to try to get a two-run dinger, and we crushed the ball. So <laughs> I'm laughing because I could literally see that happening before it happened. Hopefully you guys can see it too from all the episodes you're watching. My mechanics right now, holy crap. It's drop under the ball city, dude. Alright, so we can't get complacent here. Three runs is not going to be nearly enough against this guy. 
I think I'll probably have to score close to 10 to win this game. I'm going to be real with you guys. But we're on pace to do that, so we're on pace to score 9, actually. So trying to do some more traditional sequencing. We hung the curveball there. Uh, yeah. Should have stuck with the fastball, I guess. I don't know. Pitching with Bob Feller is like a crapshoot, dude. I don't know. I don't know what to throw. See, he just he took advantage of the same opportunity that we did. So that was actually really good for my opponent. He just didn't get the result. It was actually textbook the exact same situation what just happened, but he got good okayed. So he crushed an off speed. Pretty obvious I was going to go fastball afterwards. He had Mickey Mantle up, guy on first base looking to do damage. Swung first pitch, did damage. Just didn't get it out. So we are getting pretty lucky this game. I'm still trying to feel him out though. I'm really trying to stay out of obvious fastball counts. Like 3 1 is not a good count, and I threw a change up anyway. Because uh, this guy's been all over every fastball that I've thrown pretty much. Yep. Good on him, man. This is Bob Feller's issue, man. You can't uh, you can't throw competitive off speed with this card. This is the problem that I had with the with the regular Bob Feller. But uh, not knocking my opponent at all. Great great inning from him so far. He could easily have four runs instead of three. Uh, we're the way we're gonna have to pitch this guy is throwing off speed on the corners early in the count, and I don't know if we're gonna be able to do it with Bob Feller. Try to stick with the off speed here. Good take. And a check swing. Did he go around? We'll try to throw a high slider, see if he's sitting on the fastball with high tunnels. See how this pitch does. Yeah, we got him swinging early. So this is a pretty common approach versus Bob Feller as well. You don't want to overdo this, but uh, against pitchers historically like Bob Feller, Nolan Ryan, people usually just assume high tunnels are fastballs or sinkers so throwing high off speed could work out in your favor occasionally obviously you have to hit your spot if you hang it you're gonna be screwed so uh, we stole an out there from Gary Sheffield Let's try to do it again it's a lot more risky versus a lefty because if I hang it it's gonna get crushed I'm fine with missing there I'm surprised that hit him though uh, trout so now we're in the same situation do you have anyone warming up in his bullpen? He does not. So, call it cheese, call it whatever you want. I call it I'm scared. <laughs> we definitely checked his bullpen before this though, because if he had someone warming up, we could not do this play. Because that would imply that he is willing to pinch hit for Royals Vault, and we do not want to face a pinch hitter with the bases loaded. So hopefully we can get out of this again, and Roy Oswald's going to hit a 3-RBI extra base hit on a changeup on the black. Oh, boy. <laughs> we got it done once. We got severely punished the second time. Look where that pitch is. Just early okay as well. Uh, I don't know what to say, man. Good hit. 6-3 to three now. Big inning from our opponent. We may have to get Bob out of there soon. We kind of have to pitch this inning, though. Yeah, Mickey, 9-3, to three, bro. <laughs> remember when I had to say 10? Remember when I said I had to score 10? I didn't think I was going to have to come back from 9 down after, or from 9 runs after the third inning. All right, Bob, can you get out of this inning? We have no confidence, so we're going to have to mound visit. And try to start throwing some strikes again. This inning escalated quickly. Nine run inning for my opponent. That's pretty nuts. So now you guys got to see me play from way behind. Only six hits but nine runs. I mean, that's my fault for the eye walk. The intentional walks, but uh, that's tough. <laughs> that Oswald hit really hurt, dude. Especially with not good timing on it. That was That was tough. So obviously next time Bob's up, we're going to pinch hit, but we're trying to get get to that point without burning too much of our bullpen. Uh, he's just relentless this inning. We can't get out of it. Giambi hitting for the second time. Our opponent is playing really, really well. 
Obviously, he scored nine runs in three innings. So that was an early swing as well. We finally get out of it. Now we have to start producing some results at the plate. Nine to three. <laughs> we got six, seven, eight up. So obviously, we're going to warm someone up here. Uh, we'll probably go with a righty. Let's go with Eck. I don't really want to go to a second starter just because I want to save them. I'm just dropping, bro. And so now he's like overconfident, it seems like. <laughs> the disrespect is enhanced now because he's got a six run lead. So we're probably going to have to start swinging early in the count pretty often here because he's just going to he's gonna feed us, feed us the pitches. Couple of sinkers there, probably a slider away now. That's what he got me swinging at before. Just a fastball down the middle. All right. Probably hard stuff again. Sinker up and in. Will it get through? It will not. My PCI mechanics are just not good. I've said that a couple times this video. Just not squaring the ball up when I need to. So even if Tremel doesn't get on here, we are going to still take Bob out. Tremel gets the fastball down the middle. It's going to stay in the yard, though. That sucks. <laughs> Getting that run straight away would have been awesome. Uh, but now we're going to pinch hit. We'll go with Eddie Matthews since he's obviously not going to take Roy Oswald out here. No reason to. Maybe he'll double up on the disrespect. He did not. We were ready for it, though. We need a big hit from Eddie here. Did not get it done. Over the top of the ball. Yikes. So very obviously, we can't give up any more runs pretty much the rest of this game. We're going to have to pitch our ass off to win this one. <clears throat> Hopefully uh, the change to the finesse pitcher will mess him up a little bit. I've talked about in previous episodes how I like to kind of go fast, slow, fast, slow when I change my pitchers. So Eckersley, more of a finesse pitcher as opposed to Feller, who just throws gas, albeit wherever he pleases. So maybe slowing his bat down will be good, not only for this inning, but for innings to come when we go back to the fireballers. Uh, but yeah, we're going to have to... Uh, how did he foul that off? We're going to have to... We're going to have to score a lot. <laughs> you guys obviously know that. That's a very early rolled over single, and it's going to be a double, possibly a triple. <laughs> Bro, <laughs> oh my god, this is the worst game of all time. Here comes the bunt dance too, you guys ready? Oh, he didn't do it. Got the pop-up, that's huge. Alright, I think I may put the infield in here. I probably should have done it for the last batter. Because uh, like I said, any more runs that he scores are just, it's not going to be good for me. So we'll, this is kind of a do or die situation where we have to try to save this run. I don't like it. If he squirts one through the infield or if he bloops one on me, that sucks. But uh, this is kind of how it has to be given the game state. Eckersley throwing dots, though. Possibly keeping us in it. Beautiful. Okay. Now let's get DD out. Could intentionally walk here, too. It's probably the right play. Um, but... You know, I'm a little PTSD from the last time I did that now. <laughs> so, <laughs> I don't know. This is definitely incorrect to not walk him here, but I'm kind of uh, kind of struggling. And he squirts one through the right side. All right. 10 to 3. Here we go, chat. So, this should be first and second with two outs. If uh, Tremel would have fielded the ball, that was very early rolled over. But complaining is not going to do us any good. We have to score seven runs in the next five innings. So we're going to try to stick to our approach, but we are going to probably have to make some adjustments. Because, like I said, the way this guy's pitching makes me think that he's just going to throw it down the middle every time. So we're just going to have to hit it. Shifted infielders. 
Gregorius has it on to first, and it's a good start to the inning for Oswalt here as there are two gone. Digging in, Gary Sheffield. It was a flyout for him in his last trip. Almost mad. Three pitch inning. <laughs> oh, he's just not letting me play my game, dude. I almost I almost wonder if he knows it's me. But uh but yeah. This is tough. These are these are tough games. It's hard to win any game when you give up ten runs. And it seems like every time his weak contact gets through and mine's not getting through. It happens. Such is MLB the show. Probably need to start warming some people up. Oh, the tag double play. All right, some <laughs> some stuff went our way. This is this is making me feel better now. Another early swing. I think Tremel's gonna get there. Okay. So we have to figure something out. We either need to start swinging first pitch like we have and actually score up the ball, or we just need to be relentless with our approach and let him get into an 0-2 count every hitter. This is a tough spot. Uh, I swung first pitch late and got a hit there. <laughs> so that wasn't either of our goals. But, uh, yeah. Need to get someone warming up in case we have a big inning here. Uh... The pitcher spot is due up like five spots from now. Hanley got the sinker down the middle and crushed it, so that's 10 to 5. So, yeah. Even with runners on, this guy is still just feeding me pitches down the dick. So, it seems like the solution is going to have to be to swing early in the count. This is one of those rare games where you guys are going to have to see me get out of my game plan just because of how my opponent's playing. Uh... He's very obviously trying to counter what I'm doing. And this happens sometimes. Sometimes people just assume you can't hit a ball. So, Helton the other way. That's an out, though. Feels bad. Get squared. <laughs> Come on, game. I need these. Not quite down the middle, so we take that. Let's see if Joe Carter can get something doing. He has been slumping like crazy lately. Get something doing. I don't know what that means. Get something going. Hi, sinker. Are we going to bloop him? It's foul. Nope, we're not going to bloop him. Fastball down the dick. <laughs> 10 to 6. <laughs> Here we come, boys. He's throwing us BP, so uh, we're, cl we're climbing back in it slowly. Tremel 2 for 2. This Tremel card is so good, man. I'm late on that still. I know it's coming, and I'm late on it. That's just terrible. All right, pinch hitter is going to be Trout here just in case he wants to make a pitching change. Trout still hits righties better, but uh, if he does want to make a pitching change, this makes it a little harder for him. So this is the play. Trout the other way for a single. Once again, sinker fastball early in the count. I would imagine he'd throw me off speed here, but you never know. He did not. And we're going to fly out to the track. Oh, it's off the wall. Can we score on this? We cannot. Great animation off the wall. This is a big deal now. I cannot imagine he leaves Oswald in here. This would be insane. Okay, we have to capitalize. And he threw me a fastball down the middle again. <laughs> what is he doing? He literally let me back in the game for no reason by just the disrespect chat. It's an emote on my stream. What the hell is going on? If I get the L, I'm actually going to be so sad. <laughs> I'm going to be so sad if I lose this. We were going to win. We were climbing back. This man just disconnected up 10 to 9, I think. And he was at 877. Uh... <laughs> that was the strangest, weirdest, most confusing six innings I've ever played in my entire life. 
I do not know what to say other than thank you for watching and I hope you learned some stuff. Will I, was I going to win that game? The world may never know. And I hope that his internet just didn't die out in his World Series game because yikes. But uh, yeah, 10 to 9 in the 6th. Hope you guys enjoyed watching. Hope you learned something. Bob Feller is going to be off the squad forever. All that work to prestige him for him to have a 27 ERA. <laughs> I knew he was going to be bad, dude. The card's just not good versus good players. Yeah, 27 ERA, 4 whip. What what a good guy. <laughs> it's my fault I left him out to dry, but I'll go ahead and wrap up the video. Sorry these keep getting cut short. Uh, that was actually going to turn into an amazing game, so I'm really sad that he disconnected or whatever happened. But uh, um, overall, as a summary... That was I'm happy that happened because that was one of the game one of the games that happened to me sometimes maybe they happen to you guys too but uh, he obviously knew what I was trying to do he knew what my approach was and so we had to flip the script and uh, do the opposite of what we usually do because he was just throwing us BP down the middle so sometimes you just gotta hit the ball if they're not gonna let you work the count so appreciate you guys watching once again drop a comment if you have any cr criticism for me drop a like on the video it helps me out a ton. Love you guys. See you next time. Peace.